Hi guys and welcome back to this week's vlog. Uh, this is a place called Hot One. This is location number one for today. Um, some of you might watch Outlander. This is not purely an Outlander nerd tour. Um, this is got, going to have a lot of talk in it as well. So I've already taken a shot here. I'm not able to do much vlogging because it's very busy. That's exactly why I did some photography here. Welcome to location number two, if um, any recognise where I am just now. This is location number two on our wee Outlander tour. I know you're probably thinking, what does this have to do with landscape photography? Well, you have to use quite a lot of the similar techniques that you'd use in landscape photography when you're shooting places like this, especially if there's loads of tourists about, um, which as you saw in the previous location, there were literally hundreds and I had to actually use a really long exposure to try and get that square or the circle bit pretty clear and um, so I set up the, the shot next to the car and um, tried to recreate a shot that was in the, in the program um, in season one where there's a picture of Claire Fraser sort of leaning against the car I want to try and get that but obviously when you've got modern cars and all sorts of people wandering about which they're perfectly entitled to be there but you want a nice clean scene so there is a picture of me leaning against the car not that I look anything like Claire Fraser but so we've come here to this was Lally Brock um, and it's absolutely stunning. It's very short. You pay a permit to come in, so you have to go to the Hopeton farm shop to get your permit, um, which is £3.50 per person. It used to be per car. It was like £10 a car, but it's £3.50 per person now to come in. So um, it's a very short walk. You're literally in and out in 10 minutes. What I'm going to do is I've already had a few shots here from the stairs because there's some beautiful dappled light on the stairs where I'm sitting at the moment. And then we're going to go down and shoot further down the drive. There's a really nice long drive up to the castle. There's a couple of different angles you can get this castle from. This is called Mid Hope Castle, by the way. Um, and as I said, it's featured as Lallybrock in Outlander. So I'm going to go down and try and incorporate some of this gorgeous sunset, sunshine in. And then from here, we're going to go get some food because I'm starving. I've already driven 100 miles, 100 miles today. So we're going to go get some food and then we're going to go to location number three which is Blackness Castle um, but I'll talk you through what I've been shooting here just now this sorry Blackness is also featured in Outlander um, so that'll be our final location and there's also going to be a bit of a seascape for that so stay tuned for that but here I'm literally there's no filters no nothing it's lovely soft light here obviously the building's been lit up pretty well the archway the famous archway over here which you can just see there is where Jamie Fraser famously stood looking all heroic and Claire sat on these stairs, these very stairs, um, gazing over and obviously she had that flashback of Jamie Sander over there. So we're going to try and get, I've taken a few pictures already of the arch, but I'm going to try and get it from further down the drive as I said. Um, but this picture is pretty much just a very simple, using the stairs as leading lines up to the building, which then kind of curves back around again to the, the, the arch and the sky is pretty blue and boring, but it's a lovely picture, it's a nice sort of spring picture. Um, not a typical landscape photography picture, but as I said, you have to use some of your techniques to try and eliminate some distractions <laughs> in these photographs. There was a tour bus turned up when we arrived, so the, this place was heaving. With, there must have been about 30 people here just wandering about. So long exposures are phenomenal. I think I set my timer for... Um, so my f-stop was 8. I had a shutter speed of about 100 of a second and my timer went off for about two minutes um, and I was using an ND 10 stop um, to try and get that square as clear as it could be earlier. So for this I'm not going to be using any long exposures, I don't have to because they've all gone away. So I'm literally just wondering about taking some nice pictures now. So the next one I'm particularly looking forward to because we're going to be going there for sunset. So there should hopefully, because it's such a beautiful day just now, there's not a single cloud in the sky at the moment. So hopefully that'll make for a really gorgeous sunset, fingers crossed. 
But yeah, let's go and take some more nerdy photos and then we'll head to the next location. absolutely no idea if you can hear me or not. I hope you can. Um, Blackness Castle was a bit of a washout. Uh, the part of the castle that I wanted to photograph was actually celebrated, so it was a bit of a pointless endeavour. So um, I didn't take any pictures. I was going to send the drone off as well, but it's far too windy. The wind's about 20 mil an hour now, which as you know, drones don't like. So I've come to this pier, which is at the other end of the harbour, and um, it's got a few wee floaty boats, but for a while there was a really nice glow in the sky, so I've tried to kind of capture that with the pier. Yeah, so some of that golden hour light was actually hitting the sides of the pier as well, so it looked pretty nice. It's got a nice Scotland flag, so it's very touristy. <laughs> I'm not sure if I have any complications planned for tonight, you never know. I'm going to go and get a coffee back at the car and then have a think because it's partially cloudy, so there's potential for... We've got about another hour until sunset, so there's potential. So I'm going to hang about and wait and find another location within this area. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed we might find something. Just for reference, um, this is location 4 for today, um, just because Blackness was an absolute washout. Um, I should mention Blackness is where, so if, also if you're an Outlander fan, you know Blackness is used as Fort William in the program. So this is the Lurko Palace, which is the also really favoured fife for the, the, lo the filming locations for this program. Oh, nice you can see that lovely sun behind me. I don't know if you can see it. So this is the Lurko Palace, this was used as and I've got here just in time for golden hour. I've managed to catch some beautiful light on the water, some beautiful light hitting the sides of the castle. A wee um, tree, of tree, a sort of tree of trees in the middle of the loch. Um, this is loch, the loch or loch, this is a loch on the goat, they call it. Um, and hunters of ducks. So everywhere I go, I'm getting chased by ducks. So this is uh, the last location. I think I'm going to call it a day. I just had a coffee in the car and uh, had a good think about where it was nearby. Um, I've got a map legend on my Google Maps, which for this particular um, kind of shoot tells me where all the sort of local places are. There's one more, which is about 20 miles from here called Cole Ross, but I'm not going to go there today because I've run out of time. And light, it's all gone now. There's a big dirty cloud going over the back. I'm going to just grab another shot because that's... That back bit is getting really red. It's orangey. It's very dramatic looking though, which is what I absolutely love. So I'm going to have a very dramatic last picture of the Lithgow Palace and I'm going to try and wrap this up probably in the house once I've had a chance to process the photos. So I'll see you back at my desk. Hello, I'm going to keep this brief. So um, I've come away with quite a few images from today's shoot and uh, the first one obviously is a bit of a composition, it's a bit of a composite. So um, obviously the whole premise of this video was basically showing that we can use similar techniques in what people would normally call tourist day sort of photography or travel photography um, that we'd use in landscape photography and I think that's quite important to realise that all of these techniques are transferable across all different styles. Um, so that's why I was using the ND filter at the Falkland uh, fountain to try and eliminate as much of the, the sort of the folk just having a lovely day and as lovely as they are, don't want them in my picture. <laughs> so 
I used the ND filter to try and get rid of that and uh, give us as clean uh, an image as possible. So this is what I've come up with. There we go. So this is me posing beside my car. Um, obviously I've changed the license plate and the colour of my car. I wanted the car to be more of a burgundy colour because that's what the classic car is that um, Claire Fraser is standing next to. So I'm trying to recreate it as accurately as possible but giving it a more of a modern take. So it's not going to be, obviously I wasn't dressed appropriately so it's supposed to be like a kind of modern take on a sort of still from, a, from the programme. So, so I think I've achieved that. I'll give you a comparison of the two images here. Um, obviously I look nothing like her. But it's a, it was really good fun to do. Obviously we had to do it very quickly because uh, people were staring and things. So, <laughs> so, and it was very, very busy as you can see and you could probably hear I didn't do a lot of vlogging there. So that's the first image. Um, I'm very happy with it. I've also cropped it as a 16 by 9 crop um, to give it sort of more of a cinematic feel as well. Uh, I haven't added any filters to it or anything like that. The tone in the image has been mirrored across the two pictures as much as closely as I could get them so I'm pretty happy with the finished result. It's just a bit of fun and um, it's kind of similar to the Skyfall picture that everybody takes going down Glen Etive now so um, yeah moving on to the next one. So this is image number two. This is Mid Hope Castle otherwise known as Lally Rock. Again I used a lot of similar techniques that I've used for landscape photography to try and get this image. Um, waited till it was quiet, there's no filters or anything used here, this is just straight out, pretty much straight out of the camera with a wee bit of a contrast boost. So um, I used, there was a crack in the drive that kind of led up to the archway that I used as a sort of leading line up to the arch which then followed on the castle. I used a tree canopy to sort of frame the whole image and bring it all together so yeah pretty happy. It does, it, I mean it, it wouldn't look out of place in a sort of tourist book either. So I think I covered quite a lot in, on location about the setting up of the shot and things like that as well. Um, or that was actually the stair shot I was doing at that time, but the, the image is pretty self-explanatory, it kind of speaks for itself. There's a leading line, there's a framing aspect and there's a, a very clear composition, a very clear subject as well. So the third image I got was from Blackness Castle and it was um, down beside the beach at the castle. So there was a, a kind of, the tide when it's out, there's a sort of rocky um, bit you can walk out to which I was hoping for, but obviously the light wasn't right, the sun was at the wrong place and stuff like that, so I had to abandon that idea. And I went for the, the seascape, which is I think is a bit more interesting as well, because you're also, it's, there's nothing to do with the castle in the picture. But what it does give you is a fantastic viewpoint over to the Fourth Road Bridges, specifically the Queensferry Crossing. Um, the way I framed it is I didn't want the Queensferry Crossing to be very dominant in the frame. Every single picture you see of the bridges, the, the bridge is very much the subject, it's very much the dominant part of the picture. Um, I wanted to have the bridges there, but it's mostly about the light on the water and the movement of the water and the fact that the tide's coming in, so it's battering off the rocks and it looks really cool. And they just really provide something to look at in the background, I think. And the photos are more about the light and stuff in the water and the drama in the water. So yeah, I was quite happy with this sweet sort of seascape. Um, I'm getting more into seascapes now, so I'm looking forward to summer to try and get more sort of tidal ones as well. So moving on to the next picture. Obviously the castle itself was a bit of a bust because the light was in the wrong place so I walked up to the harbour which is at the other end of the castle um, or the other end of the town and uh, I found this wee pier which had a wee Scotland flag at the bottom um, so what I did was expose for the sky, the sky obviously it was sunset, it was about 20 minutes before sunset so it was the last golden hour and it was hitting the side of the pier so the light looked really nice on the sort of um, stalks at the side and then I literally just exposed for the sky, framed it up, made sure it was straight and took the shot. It didn't take very long, there wasn't an awful lot of thought put into it. Um, but what I will do at the end is when I put the pictures up, I'll put the EXIF data on it so you can have a look at the settings and things that I use for each photo. So today's video has had a massive range of subjects. You've had castles and we've had fountains and we've had other castles which didn't really work and then we had seascapes and then we had a pier. So it's kind of followed a bit of a path from um, water back to water again. So. So the last image that I took was Linlithgow Palace and obviously on location I spoke about that in great depth so I won't go back into that again but I'll post the pictures at the end of the video so you can have a look at it as well. It's pretty much just a standard sunset type picture but it ties in with the Outlander theme. Linlithgow Palace was used as Wentworth Prison in the programme so it's another one to add or to tick off my list of places that I've visited so far. So I'm quite happy with the tour that I've done today. I think I've managed to incorporate quite a lot of different ranges of subjects. Um, at different times of the day again which I quite enjoy doing. I have spanned out over the whole day. I started travelling at 12 o'clock, um, got to the first place about half past one, got to the next place about two o'clock, half past two. So um, managed to find the timings quite well but obviously 
it was too early in the year for that sunset picture that I wanted at the castle but I can always get that in the middle of summer when the sun's further around so I'm not too disheartened about that but I have enjoyed the shoot anyway it's been really good fun finding even from a nerdy point of view just finding places that people have filmed in and things as well and the historical points that they've used and it's been very educational so I'm going to um, wrap up today's video here I hope you've enjoyed it I've tried to keep this bit as brief as possible so tune in next week at 6pm for the next vlog and until then I'll see you soon bye